This isn't really Paris, but I'll say good evening, Paris. I'm Lydia Lunch, accompanied by Lisa Walter, and this is what we do.
legs spread wide, lucky strike dangling from my cock stained scarlet lips, eyes on the alarm clock, which will remind me of my coming funeral procession, that century long samba, which will be littered with the hundreds of corpses of all those beautiful young soldiers who had rifled into me like bullets fired at point blank range and I'll be dreaming about how the blood and calm would feel like hot molten lead. My mind swill will be drunk on the uncountable contaminants I have feasted on for decades as some kind of prophylactic against my own sickness. I'll be high on cocaine, MDMA, madness, cognac, Xanax, if I get too out of control. Yeah, and I remember, actually, some days, some days, some days, some nights, I saw the best minds of my generation scoring dime bags of dope on Avenue T. Their sickness, inseparable from their disease, they would pass out, puke, wake up, pass out, puke, and they always said the same thing. They said, some nights, some nights, some nights, some decades are meant to be wasted and wasted. I haven't wasted a second of my fucking life. like a sick shark, isolated in a prison of 
pain, his loneliness tasted of sand and sewer drains, of day-old beer and broken promises, of black eyes and bruised ribs, of bloody rags wrapped around the chapel. He said he was soaking up the fallout from the body as battlefield. He said the body is just a battlefield. The body is just a punching bag. The body is just an experimental canvas. The body is just a sack of pus and calm, and he did everything in his power to make sure his body was trampled under by his own big black boots. Stormtroopers kicking the shit out of him, obviously looking for the enemy within, waging a counteroffensive which would guarantee mutually assured destruction, not only against him, not only against me, but aimed directly at that shell-shocked little boy that cowered in the corners late that night, scared of holy ghosts and shadows, waiting for his mommy, and oh, I'll play mommy, I'm good at it, to kamikaze in to the demilitarized zone, that place where a part of him still lived, and oh, I wanted to love him like he pretended to love me. <laughs> Now, maybe I've just seen one too many late night black and white film noirs like Strangers on a Train, Fire Walk with Me, Rope, Gun Crazy, The Fugitive Kind. Vengeance is mine. Vengeance is mine. He was an ideal reflection of who he thought I was, and we were mirrored in each other's eyes. We both had beautiful eyes, beautiful eyes, which lied as I drained mine of everything except for heat and desire. He was like a hungry orphan. He was just constantly getting lost in my cruel smile. I felt like my lips were twisting around a man who he thought was him but was really me. It was a reflection of my need, my greed, my loneliness. And I remember, I remember, yeah, I remember. I remember when he was trying to reinvent himself over and over again. He was picking up the derelict pieces of shattered dreams. He was making peace with the empty promises and 
endless threats before his violence and malevolence became a magnetic firestorm, a spontaneous combustion of bloodlust and mistrust. He was like a punch-drunk bruiser shadow boxing in the dark. He was punching shadows and raping ghosts. He was hell-bent on murdering that invisible enemy, that killer inside of him that wanted inside of me, but the killer inside of me has a mind of her fucking own. And before I knew it, my hands were around his fucking throat, and his neck was broken in three different places. Now maybe I just see one, two, many, late night, black and white, filmy wires like strangers on a train. Fun, crazy, rope, fire walk with me. Vengeance is mine. Vengeance is mine. Mama's boy can no longer get it up anymore on the mere flesh and bones alone, but he needs the blood. He needs the life's blood. Yeah. And now I can understand the need to murder. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can understand the need to slaughter. But why is it always the daughters, the mothers and fuckers that condemn men to kill in the first place that get taken out and not the real original perpetrators, mommy and daddy fucking dearest. They're probably left. No little boy grows up deciding he wants to be a madman or a maniac or a serial killer or a schoolyard sniper. Maybe mommy and daddy or daddy dearest left him in front of the idiot box with a babysitter who was stoned on acid, finger fucking herself off in the next room while talking to her boyfriend on the telephone. So mommy and daddy dearest could come home plastered and battered and the castration and submission. All the little boys that didn't want to grow up to be madmen and maniacs and serial killers, but were just carrying on in the family tradition. And in some families, abuse, neglect, Murder, trauma, madness is a fucking tradition. <laughs>
Understanding of narcotics and psychotropics, and I'm still searching for the drug that'll bring me real ecstasy, not some cheap weekend rave, not like most women. You see, my daily battle game is a schizophrenic mood swing, which goes from anger and aggression to apathy to near murder to ecstasy, and ecstasy just slips through my fingers far too fucking often. I mean, ecstasy slips through my fingers far too often. I'm still searching for someone, anyone, who knows and wants the real thing. You think you know what you know what you fucking want? You want the real fucking thing? You think you can deal with this? You want to deal with this? I'm still looking for somebody who knows what they fucking want and knows how to get it. I'm still searching for real because I've been grooming you for a while, so. <laughs> <laughs>
where suicide is and was. Thank you very much, Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm about to tell a poem. Don't interrupt. Late night lost. Stranded on the corner of sunset and accidental. The ghosts of all those that could have been, should have been, leave a Vaseline smeared lipstick smudge on the rear view mirror's busted glass. I'm feeling about as lonely as one left shoe with a busted ankle strap thrown out the window of the Starlight Motel. There is no drug potent enough to burn off that memory of him, that soured, honeyed, tumbleweed of hair that smells of dirty sex and cigarettes. I keep reaching for his mouth, forgetting about how the night bled out, turning a beautiful angel into a beautiful corpse. He's just a mirage. He's just a mirage. He's crushing me. He slowly rises like a desert rat. He's gathering the strength of dead men everywhere. I move my lips in protest, but my breath is turned to dust. My bones are hollow husks. He's mouthing instructions which I will fight with all my will. He's telling me to pick up the snub nose. Pick up the snub nose. He slinks into me. He's in my skin. This is his domain. I have a soft spot for him. Yeah, I have a soft spot. This is on the razor's edge. Kiss on the razors. This is his domain. Here, take her to the endless obsidian night, that reanimator of dead dreams and broken promises. He's just a mirage. He's just a mirage. He's crushing. Of warriors. It's for the warriors 
It's for the warriors. This is for the warriors who weren't afraid to die fighting somebody else's battle because they realized it is better to die fighting for your freedom than to lead a life enslaved by lies. This is for those who believe. It's for those who believe it. You better believe. You better believe in ghosts. You better believe in ghosts because soon enough, you too will become a ghost. This is for the ghosts of Fallujah, Ember Province, Abu Ghraib, Bakuba, Guantanamo, Gaza, Beirut, Baghdad, Kabul, Kandahar, Jalalabad, Islamabad, Kathmandu, Mogadishu, Darfur, Sierra Leone. This is for the freedom fighters. This is for the freedom fighters. This is for the insurgents, the rebels, the rabble rousers. This is for every individual who fights against tyranny and oppression. This is for the martyrs. This is for the martyrs. This is for the martyrs. This is for Mohammed Mossadegh, Salvador Allende, Garcia Lorca, Oscar Romero, Federico, Pasolini, Bruno Schultz, Madeline Murray O'Hare. And if you don't know who she is, look it up. Madeline Murray O'Hare, the most hated woman in America, as I came along. She got rid of prayer in schools, found murdered in the desert by her assistant. This is for the wounded and traumatized. This is for the wounded and traumatized. This is for the survivors. This is for the survivors. This is for anybody who strives to thrive and succeed. This is for anyone who feels as if, like I do, I am suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome every day of my fucking life. This is for those who choose to survive. This is for those who choose to survive and strive to overcome the roadblocks and landmines, the pitfalls and setbacks, the negativity of a world which forces you to fight tooth and nail, forces you into battle mold on a daily basis just so you can maintain a tenuous grip on your own fucking sanity after a lifetime of the enemy's abuse, humiliation, and brainwashing. This is what goes to Brooklyn, the Bronx, Detroit, Watts, Englewood, Oakland, St. Louis, New Orleans, Memphis, Trent, Youngstown, Cleveland, Camden, Baltimore, Newark, Little Rock, Tulsa, Baton Rouge. This is for anybody who feels like they were born a ghost, invisible in life, born into a war zone of poverty, desperation, and neglect, and not... If you're like me, you come from a fucking country which glamorizes violence, worships serial killers, threatens by massacre, and then arrogantly brags about gangbanging the whole fucking planet. Whoa. Yeah. This is for the lovers. This is for the lovers. This is for the lovers of forgetfulness. Oh, I wish I could fucking forget. But like every witch, I feel fucking cursed to know every fucking atrocity committed by every fucking man that's ever walked this fucking planet. Yeah, because it's for the go. Most of all, it's for my fucking ghost. And my ghost will be as loud in death as I have been in life. Trust me, motherfuckers. <laughs>
Tweezle Walter, motherfuckers. Yo! It's very pleased with your response. Thank you. <laughs> what is a ghost but too much electricity, too much energy, too much matter, too much motion, too much emotion, I guess that must make me a fucking ghost. Yeah. You know, all creation bears the molecular memory of a terrible explosion of white light, white heat, yeah. You know, violence was the first act of creation, the big fucking bang. Chaos is the law of nature. Chaos is the law of nature. It's the score upon which reality was written. The universe is just geometry stricken with epilepsy. I myself am merely a convulsionary suffering from episodic fits of frenzy. And although I didn't say it, some surrealist of the 1920s said, whoever creates demands destruction. Whoever creates demands destruction. I mean, some of us, just some of us, that we may Violence is as natural as breathing. To some of us, violence is as natural as breathing. We're conceived in a passionate act of animal violence. Our first cry is slapped out of us. We're born in blood. We are battered into breathing. How can I admit it? The American way of life has turned me into a death defying murder junkie. I'm high on bombs bursting in the air, on bullets rifling off the bellies of pregnant women, of poisoned children shot on school buses, on schoolyard snipings. I mean, I'm seeing craters of despair in the eyes of men, women, and children, their eyes rotted by the capnoid glare of the television, video games, the internet. I mean, the whole world's gone wild, right? I mean, the whole world's gone wild, right? I mean, oh, baby, baby, it's a wild. The whole fucking world's gone wild, man. They turned the whole fucking world into a ghetto, a whorehouse, an orphanage, a refugee camp, a sweatshop, a slaughterhouse, a bomb factory, a landmine, a butcher shop, a shooting gallery, an insane asylum, a toxic fucking dump. And all the killers are heroes. All the killers are here. All my heroes are killers. And I myself am filled with a murderous fucking rage. It's like a battle of bitches boxing their way out. I mean, one minute, really, you're flesh and bones, and the next minute, you're flesh and fucking blood. I feel like I have become the rapist. I have become the rapist whose impotence at annihilating the real killers has made me very violent against myself and anybody else who gets in my fucking way. And if you think I'm fucking hostile, you have no fucking clue. You got no fucking clue. I'm holding it all together here. I am fucking holding it all together. Now maybe I've gotten inside the enemy's head. I've gotten inside the enemy's head. He's sleeping in my fucking bed. The enemy's gotten inside my head. He's sleeping in my fucking bed. My war. My war. My war. What makes you think that you're my fucking friend? I think you might just be. My war. My war has always been the battle of sex as an animal act. One woman against every fucking man. You're either with me or you're against me. You want to fight or you want to fuck either way, bitch boy, you're going to get fucking hurt. I mean, face it, the more they kill, the more I fuck. My womb, a tomb, a sacrificial cunt. Now, welcome to my church. Hallelujah. <laughs> to my church. It's only one commandment. Rebellion. From false virtue, pleasure is the ultimate rebellion because it's the first thing they steal from us as fucking women. Rebellion from false virtue, pleasure at the mouth of the apocalypse. It's always apocalypse now in my fucking reality. Yeah, yeah, pleasure at the brink of a disaster. Pleasure at the mouth 
Literally, the apocalypse is a love term for the Amish. There is no encore. You don't have to applaud. We know what we just did. We've got like 10 CDs to auction out, go out for the cigarette, last man standing, only will be the women. Yo! Yeah!